Welcome back to an all new episode of the Grand Valley State Sports Report here in WGVU. I'm your host, Steve Lloyd-Jones, and here's what's coming up for you tonight. GVSU football is locked into their first NCAA playoff game against Northwest Missouri State. GVSU women's soccer wraps up their season after an impressive first year under head coach Katie Holtine. GVSU women's basketball found two wins in Allendale. And our feature this week highlights GVSU football and their strength and conditioning practices. Lock it in, Laker Nation, as the Grand Valley State Sports Report starts right now. GVSU football earned a bye this weekend as the number one seed in Super Region number three. The Lakers watched as Ferris State, Pittsburgh State, and Northwest Missouri State won their first round games. Head coach Matt Mitchell joins me now to give us the latest here on Super Region number three. Mitch, welcome. So you guys uh, uh, well earned by some time off. It's not like you're sitting around all week. Tell us what you've been doing, how you guys are prepping through this week with no game. Yeah, so we practiced a couple days and really practiced on Grand Valley. We didn't really try to look ahead at all. I think that you can uh, get game plans to be stale if you go too far in advance. We really just worked on like Grand Valley, a lot of things we had to get ready. And, you know, also uh, allowed the guys to have some time off a little bit on Friday and Saturday. And then we did get a bonus practice in on Sunday uh, for Northwest. And so kind of the, you know, walking that balance, making sure we're sharp, but also letting our guys kind of rest up and get some guys hopefully off injury. Yeah, Northwest Missouri State winning that game over Wichita Baptist. So almost the top four seeds held <laughs> throughout the region, but uh, Northwest the number five seed. So this is going to be the team here as uh, we'll, we'll break it down in a moment. Um, mentally, emotionally, how do you feel like the guys are going into this week? They're excited. I mean, yesterday at practice, I think they're really fired up. Um, you know, it's a new opponent for most of them. We did play them back in 2018, <clears throat> the first round of the playoffs, but for the most part, this is new. And, but the guys are well aware of the history and tradition of Northwest Missouri State, having won six national championships and made the playoffs for however many years in a row. So uh, definitely have our respect. I also think the score on Saturday, um, you know, was really showed them you know, how good Northwest is. I mean, I think mm -hmm. the MIAA is a really solid conference, and uh, they were the, one of the two teams that got in from that. And I would say, too, I think they also understand this is an improving football team. Uh, they had two losses. Those were earlier in the year. Uh, but they've won some really key games late. late. The last uh, the regular season game, they beat an Emporia State team, ended up 8-3 to get into the playoffs pretty much. And so they've kind of been in that mode. So Northwest has been in kind of a winner-go-home type mode here mm -hmm. for for a little bit, you can definitely see the sense of urgency on tape from them winning. And I think our players understand, you know, you get this time of year, it's one of two results. Either you're hugging the seniors and you're out of the tournament or you just advance and yep. there's 16 teams and we're just trying to find a way to be one of eight. Northwest happens to be the challenge in front of us. Yeah, North Northwest Missouri State, 47-17, the win over uh, Wichita Baptist. So tell us about this team, what, what you care to share. Um, you know, Laker fans remember big, powerful defenses, pretty explosive offenses, well coached. I'm sure it's a lot of the same thing. It is very similar. Rich Wright's done a great job there taking over as the head coach. I believe it's his fifth or sixth years uh, built on defense. You know, I think uh, coming out, I don't know how after Saturday, but <clears throat> they were the number one team in the nation in regards to rush defense. Um, very, very big physical front, a lot of experience up there. And so that's really what they, you know, hang their, hang their hat on is their defense. Uh, they do a great job on special teams, too, in regards to creating the field position. Um, the, the quarterback is a very mobile quarterback. He's an active quarterback that kind of creates some issues for you. They will run him. He um, runs around and kind of ends up making some plays. But uh, definitely a team that, when you look at them statistically, is one of the top defenses in America. So I think, you know, at Lover Stadium on Saturday, uh, we're number one in the nation in scoring defense. We're number one in rushing. <clears throat> You're going to have two of the top defenses in Division Two. <laughs> They're going to go at each other. So I'm um, not saying it's going to be a 10-7 to 7 football game or anything like that. You never know. <laughs> But yeah. there certainly are challenges for both offenses when you take a look at what they have to go against. Tough time of year. I know we don't want to get into game plans. Obviously, they've had 
a couple of issues here and there. Uh, they had two losses. They've had some narrow wins, mm -hmm. which were giving up some points to people. What What do you guys see maybe as vulnerabilities? Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I think that, well, they've had some injuries um, at the quarterback position, the offensive in injuries on the offensive line. And so I think those were really a reason that they've, you know, lost maybe a couple of those games, just had some inconsistent performances. I think it more had to do with offense. And I think it was, you know, a little bit more about, you know, injuries more than anything. <clears throat> they really have started to find their groove. You know, offensively, obviously scored 47 points in the playoff game, and so, you know, they're they're getting guys back. You can tell there's guys coming back being healthy that they're they're leaning on. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, things, I think both both coaching staffs do a great job game planning, and so that's yeah. what I think is going to be really interesting. I mean, they're going to try to take away what we do well, and we are too on both sides of the ball and special teams, and so it's kind of that chess match to kind of see how things go. I think they're you can tell their coaching staff does a really good job in game planning, and you try to project, okay. What are we not good at that they're going to try to expose or try to take away our strength? But, you know, there's a fine balance. You, want to, you don't want to get away with what's got you here. It's got you 11 yeah. number one in the nation, too. So it's going to be highly competitive. It'll be an adjustment football game. I think both teams will know within the first quarter, quarter and a half, kind of how we're attacking people and defending people. And you go to work on that. And, um, again, still comes down to, you know, the, the biggest thing for our guys on offense, like there's not going to be guys wide open and running lanes aren't going to be just clean. We're ripping through it. Yeah. We're going to have to make contested plays when the ball's in the air, and we're going to have to run through some tackles. And this is a type of game where we're going to have to play four quarters, and we've done that in the past with Ferris State and Saginaw Valley. You're going to have to understand that maybe if things aren't great early on, you stick with some stuff and don't abandon it. I think we've shown yeah. that we can kind of lean on some stuff, and things will eventually kind of work our way. But we can't panic early if it, uh, it's a little bit more trading punts in a back-and-forth game. We have to stay very consistent with what we believe we can get done. Mm -hmm. No, that's a really good point. Uh, I, I think this is where part of the benefit of the schedule really starts to show. You've seen three-man fronts, five wideouts, mobile quarterbacks, great pocket pass. You've, you've seen all kinds of different things. And that's got to be handy coming into a game like this. 100%. I would say, you know, they run a front. There's a yin and yang. Their defensive front is very similar to what we run, what Ferris runs, what Saginaw runs. You know, there's a it's a little bit in vogue right now in our region, so I think the, the good part about that is you have familiarity with that front because yeah. you go against it a lot. Uh, you know, the, the flip side is, you know, the, they know the same thing too. Like, yeah. you know, they know <laughs> what the stuff is that we're probably going to end up running against that particular front. But no, uh, that, uh, definitely those experiences. I, I do think uh, it's an advantage for offense that we face a lot of different quarterbacks. <clears throat> this presents a challenge, but it's also a challenge that we've seen a, a little bit of a mobile quarterback that they will use in the quarterback run game and a guy can run around a little bit. And so, uh, you know, we have to, I'm really concerned about, you know, the play after the play with this quarterback. If it's, you know, something's not there immediately, he's going to scramble yeah. around. They've met a lot of plays with him scrambling around or scrambling to throw. Um, completed a lot, picked up a lot of third downs against Wachita, and that was really the quarterback, uh, you know, throwing the ball around. So we've got to be really on guard for getting off the field on third down because you just can't. It's going to be one of those games you just can't continue to let him convert third downs and create the field position from that. So building on that uh, final moments we have, what, what's key in this game? What, yeah. what do you got to have? Well, I mean, when you look at the games in our region last, last week, I mean, it's still it's a broken record, but it was turnovers. You know, Indianapolis threw five picks. Um, Davenport went up to Ferris and was doing a decent job and then, you know, threw a pick six and turned the ball over. And the same thing, you know, um, the first score for Northwest Missouri State was a defensive score off of right. a fumble and a scoop and a score. You can't do those things against good teams like that. We've been really good at it, but they're going to present the biggest challenge because they got big athletes that hit you hard. So your ball security, you know, protection is going to be under more duress and more pressure than it ever has been. And we just, you know, we can't turn the ball over. And we've got to try to find a way to force some turnovers to give our offense short fields. You know, going 90 yards every single drive against this defense is going to be problematic. And we've yeah. got to try to special teams and defense, whether it's because of turnovers or great special team play, we have got to try to create our offense a little bit shorter fields. All right, going to be fun. Big challenge, Northwest Missouri State. Good luck, Mitch. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be right back as the Grand Valley State Sports Report continues here in WGVU. The GVSU women's soccer season has come to a close following a defeat to Ferris State in the NCAA Midwest Regional Championship. But even in defeat, the Lakers have a lot to be proud of in their first season under the leadership of head coach Katie Holteen, who joins us now to talk all about it. Katie, welcome. Thanks. Great to have you back. Um, never easy, these kind of games. No. Um, and, and weather conditions and the like were not easy. So kind of set the scene for us a little bit. Again, you're not making excuses. You're just telling yeah. us how it all, all went down. Yeah. Um, it was, with the wind chill, about 13 degrees below zero. Um, 
for warm up and game time. Um, freezing cold. I, <laughs> if you've experienced it, you know. But it, it was it was bone chilling. Um, right on a lake. The field's right on a lake. Field was kind of covered in ice, so it just we were going to have some challenges, but. Uh, our team was up, up for the task and had great in energy going into the game and, and played really, really well. Yeah, uh, you know, you guys, uh, as is the case with a lot of teams, you'll overwhelm them and it doesn't always go your way in terms of into the net, but you certainly had opportunities, which was good. Yeah, and I think I've said it before, the sport's a little bit cruel in that regard and um, we just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net and the, the field was really narrow, which really did give Ferris a bit of an advantage defensively with the way we play. So. Um, it, it was tough, but you know, it, in the end, it went down to a PK shootout. And Ferris has already been one, through one this season, so they had a little bit of confidence going into it. And um, it was new for us this season, so a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, you, you get into that uh, that setup and tell us about that because it is with the overtime rules. Now you finally get to a, a PK uh, deciding type of thing, and that's tough. Yeah, I, I think the one of the hardest parts about this game in particular was because it was so cold, we only played a total of 13 players in the game. And, um, you know, you're, you're trying to make a decision of you've got your best PK takers that have confidence and all that, but they might, they might not be the warmest on the team. They may have been sit, sitting on the sideline for the game. So I think that was the biggest challenge for us was, mm -hmm. you know, we've got our, our players who are very confident. However, they're freezing cold. So um, we had a lot of tough decisions to make in that. And, um, you know, the, I don't think that there was a right decision or a wrong decision. I just think that that's kind of how the cookie crumbled this year. And um, I hope we get another go at it next year. Yeah. It was a scoreless tie that ended with the, the penalty kicks. And both goalies really had their moments, didn't they? Honestly. They did. Yeah. They did. Throughout the whole game, the Ferris goalkeeper, um, as we say, stood on her head a few times and, and really she did a great job keeping the ball in the back of the net. Um, and so did Kendall. And I don't know how they did it because the goal, I don't know if anyone knows about goalkeeper gloves, but when you wear them in freezing cold weather, it makes your hands 10 times colder. And um, they, they both did a really good job of holding onto the ball and making big saves. And they were mobile throughout the game, which is shocking because of how cold it was. But Kendall did a really great job in the game. So that brings the season to a close, 16, two and five overall. Uh, great first season, yeah. Katie, not just saying that. That really was Thanks. amazing. Um, so help us, because I know COVID has factored into this. Who, who is not necessarily able to return, senior yeah, status? Yeah, we actually have a lot that are able to return, but you know, a lot of players are ready to grow up and you yeah. know start a master's program or whatever somewhere else. So um, our two center backs, uh, Kate and Brooke, they're moving on. Um, Kate's starting her master's at Pitt and Brooke's getting into the real world. Um, Lex Morello is on her way into a pretty incredible uh, master's program as well. Uh, that really the demand's insane. Uh, Chantel Carranza is, um, she'll be in her sixth year of special education major, so she'll be student teaching the whole year, so she won't be back. We've got our two transfers, uh, Kennedy Metzger and Riley O'Brien, so they're done. They've, their eligibility is exhausted. And Callie Rich, who is a goalkeeper of ours that has just exhausted her eligibility. So we lose a lot, um, a lot of great experience, but we have a lot coming back. Kennedy Bearden will be back, Taylor Reed, Kenzie Jones, um, they're all going to be back. and, mm -hmm. and I'm excited for that, but we'll still be a pretty young team next year. Yeah, well, it's you know a lot that you've learned, a lot that you accomplished, and mm -hmm. that's the part. I know it stings right now, but yeah. you guys accomplished a lot. Went in the conference, you win the conference tournament, you're coach of the year, you have players who are offensive players, mm -hmm. defensive players of the year. Uh, just a really good all-around first season, and we appreciate you uh, taking time each week to talk with us. Thank of you. Of course, I love being here, and I love to I love to talk about our team because they're a special group of people. Well, Katie, thank you, and good luck as you start year number two here before long. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll be back with more after this.
The well, hopes are high for GVSU women's basketball this year. The Lakers are 4-0 coming off home wins over Tiffin and Finley. And it's time to welcome in head coach Mike Williams for the first time this year. Mike, good to see you. Yeah, it's great to be back. Uh, nice sunny morning to drive down here and uh, get a chance to hook up with you again, yeah, Steve. It's yeah. been a while, so yeah, it's it great. No, great to, to be talking with you as well. And obviously you guys are doing well, 4-0 the start. Um, Touch on a little bit. I mean, high hopes. There's there's a lot based off last year and what you're building in the program, and that's good. Yeah, I, I think it. You know, we talked about a little bit. You know, uh, the preseason rankings really don't mean a lot uh, as you move forward in the season. But obviously, it's the respect that the program's gained uh, through the years that we've been here. The players last year, the players returning, uh, the run we made last year. It, it all factors in, and um, so it's it's a it's a cool thing, but. You know, once it was, once you get that, and once the expectations are there, then you move on, and it's day by day, game by game. And mm -hmm. I do believe our players are focusing on that right now. I think that's their approach, and I, I really don't think that this whole number one thing is is affecting them at all. I really don't. Yeah, that was last year what you did, and this year you're focusing on that, Mike. How much of the the hunger, the focus, can come from the coaches, and how much has to come from the players? Well, I think we're in that crossroads. I think when you have a lot of veterans, they kind of take it and run. Um, when you've got a lot of new players, which we do this year, I think it's got to be a lot from the coaches. And so I think we're kind of in that middle ground where, you know, I, we talked about a little bit against Finley. I thought I was on him. Uh, I thought the coaching staff was on him in that first half a little bit. In the second half, we kind of backed off and let him go. Um, but, I, but I do think they are working at it. They're really working at taking ownership um, we've got some great senior leaders that are starting to be more vocal. Um, I think they're, they're bought in to what we're doing, but uh, we do still have a lot of newbies and, you know, they, they don't understand that yet. So we have to, as coaches, we have to, you know, keep harping on that, preaching on that, and uh, it'll come. They'll, they'll get there. Very solid week. You defeated uh, Tiffin at home, 78-50, to 50, the final score. Emily Spitzley uh, leads you with 17, three boards as well. Nicole Kamen had 13. Uh, spread out the scoring is, is kind of common for you guys and played well. You know, it, it, it might be that message all year where we're trying to play more players. Um, and again, you don't know. That might, the bench might shorten here as we move forward. But right now, we've been fortunate enough in the, in the four games we've played to, to go into our bench and, and play players shorter minutes. Um, but you notice, like on, uh, against Finley on Saturday, I think Emily and Ellie logged a lot of minutes in that first half. And then when we separated, they didn't log as many in the second half. So I think it's going to be a uh, game by game, week by week, how, how that pans out. But uh, right now, we're we're happy that we have a good deal of players that can play and are ready to play if they're, if they're called on. Yeah, well, you certainly do. Ellie Drosty, you were mentioning her. She had 11 in that second game of the week against Finley, 13 in the first one against Tiffin. In the win that you had over Finley, Mike, this was, uh, this was a clinic. 83-45, you win this game. Right from the start, you're playing sharp. 13 different players getting the scoring. You never trail in this game. Well, you know, and we thought Finley was a really good team. We did. We watched them play Davenport the night before. Uh, they, they went there and won Hanley, won by 20, coming off a couple wins a week before. Um, and, and I think it just, in that first quarter, was really a battle. I think we come out of there, I think it was, it was 19, 13, something like that, you know, four or five point spread. Um, and then we just kind of separated. And I think it, whether it's our pressure that got to them, whether it's them playing back to back, um, they just didn't seem to have the same pop moving forward in that in that second, third, and fourth quarter. Being on the road, you know, traveling, mm -hmm. a lot of things come into play. I thought we did a good job this year in the preseason. Um, you know, scrimmaging, we we, had, we did a a back to back in a single day. We did a back to back with Whitewater and Eau Claire um, two weeks before to get ready. We played back to back down in Missouri in St. Louis. So I think our kids were ready to play the back to back, and that might have had something to do with it as well. But we, we did. We played well. That was a good team. And, um, you know, it, it was really happy with how our players responded. Uh, Friday, I don't think we're as on point as we need to be, and I thought we were on Saturday, so that was good to see. Mm -hmm. 83-45, again, the final over Finley Grand Valley, number one in the country, 4-0 with the record. So this week, 
One game, you know, we're going through holiday time, uh, the exams coming up here. Northwood at home, and that'll be Saturday at 5 o'clock. Yeah, we get a uh, chance to watch. Uh, you know, I think there's a big football game on at noon, uh, <laughs> and then there's a big football game at home at our place at 1. That's right. Uh, playoff game. And then uh, we get a chance to play at 5. I think the men play after us. So it's going to be a crazy wild day uh, a Saturday after Thanksgiving. But, you know, w uh, looking at Northwood, they're kind of a, they were in our conference. Um, this is the first year they're out of our conference, so it's a non-conference game. We're thankful that they keep playing us. I think it's a great rivalry, mm -hmm. and every year we have great games. You know, they're a team that really likes to push the ball, um, score points, you know, change defenses on you. Um, they like to shoot the three. They put pressure on the rim, so it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, Maryville, Finley, and Tiff and some of the teams we've played, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be... Um, good to play that team that we've been playing here the uh, last couple of years. Yeah, that's right. So you had the back-to-backs this past week. This week, just the one game. But again, your players have a lot to kind of <laughs> manage, focus on here uh, on the court and off the court. But a uh, really good start to your year thus far, obviously, 4-0. and And uh, you guys as coaches, you do a fabulous job. I know you're looking at things that you want to improve and get better as you go. Uh, and I think in the coming weeks, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. But wow, what a, what a nice start here, Mike. And uh, great to have you back. And good luck coming up Saturday. All right, Steve. Thank you. And hey, have a great Thanksgiving here if we don't see you All before. right. Sounds good. We'll be right back here on the Grand Valley State Sports Report as we continue here in WGVU. In his early days at Grand Valley more than a decade ago, Matt Mitchell's most important duty was overseeing the duty roster for Chuck Martin. Mitchell's background was filled with accomplishments and certifications in the area of strength and conditioning. And he's the first to admit many of the ideas he grew up with in football have gone by the wayside as his program focuses now on achieving and preserving maximum health and fitness. You know, I think probably back in the day, you're considered lazy if you took a nap and schedules that we had for student athletes were really not conducive for sleep because we're trying to quote unquote toughen them up. I think everything we're trying to do is try to find an opportunity for guys to get eight to nine hours of sleep and if they have the opportunity to take a half hour nap, it's not a bad thing. While Mitchell spends countless hours with his assistant coaches, he carves time out each day for his strength coaches and training staff. Jim Winkler is a longtime mainstay at Grand Valley as the head football trainer and like Mitchell has seen big changes behind the scenes that have reduced injuries. Most notable at Grand Valley is a practice routine where blocking and tackling is something that is now done with great care and moderation. On our walk over here, we we're talking about our coaching staff being relatively proactive over the last few years. And I think one is, is taking out the live full contact activity. You know, we get through the middle of preseason camp and, and we're not going live a whole lot other than on Saturdays trying to save guys. In a season filled with great wins and stories, one of the best has been senior running back Jack Proventure, who's been a great compliment to Tariq Reed in the backfield. In his final go-round, Proventure placed his trust in conditioning coach Matt Fluter, a former Laker player, who has helped Jack recapture the speed he flashed as a freshman when he scored 12 touchdowns. What's been his secret? A lot of velocity-based training. We did a lot of explosive movements, a lot of plyometrics. We did a lot more running. These past two years, we've really reduced our soft tissue injuries, you know, with the, with the induction of lots of extra running and stuff like that as far as, you know, doing it intelligently and progressing it. And our guys have, you know, benefited from it when it comes to camp and then in season. Not surprisingly, the efforts of Jim Winkler and Matt Fluter have been closely tied together. And while science and modern techniques are part of it, both believe that diligence and attention to detail for staff and players is something that has to be followed at all times. Our training staff, big on the hydration stuff, we've really, really pushed that. I mean, honestly, it's about the kids buying in, and we have a really, really good culture here and that our guys look up to the upperclassmen, and we have a lot of good leadership on the team, and they're really bought into the standards we're trying to push forward. The, the issue that we see is a lot of the energy drinks. And I think a little bit is probably okay, but I think a lot of just college students, if a little bit's okay, then a lot's probably a whole lot better. And I think that's a constant battle for us, is just trying to look at some of these things that these guys put into their bodies and limit 
some of the things that they do choose to ingest. Great strength conditioning programs really have two things they're trying to achieve. One is injury prevention, the other is performance enhancement. If you lean much too much towards performance enhancement, you're gonna put your athletes at risk of injury. But if the program's too soft and it's all about injury prevention, you're not gonna be your best on Saturdays. So I think we're trying to do a good job of kind of walking that fine line. This year marked the first time Grand Valley was able to play a full 11 game regular season since 2019 and the regular season results have spoken for themselves. As for Matt Mitchell, he credits his staff and players for doing their part to help the Lakers field their best possible team each week of the year. As the saying in football goes, the best ability is availability. For the Grand Valley State Sports Report, I'm Tom Cleary. Well, that's all the time that we have this week here in the Grand Valley State Sports Report. GVSU football will play their first game in the NCAA playoffs against Northwest Missouri State in Allendale on Saturday, November 26th. Game time is set for 1 p.m. from Lover Stadium. GVSU men's basketball will head down to St. Louis, Missouri for a pair of games this week. They'll take on Umsol on Tuesday, November 22nd at 4.15 p.m. Then they'll take on Maryville in a 2 p.m. matchup on Wednesday, November 23rd. To round out the week, the Lakers will return to Allendale and host Michigan Dearborn on Saturday, November 26th at 7 p.m. GVSU women's basketball will host Northwood at the GVSU Fieldhouse Arena, also coming up this Saturday. Tip-off is scheduled for 5 p.m. in that game. For upcoming games, as well as live broadcasts of every Laker athletic program, visit gvsulakers.com. For more of this show, head on over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash WGVU35. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get the updated videos and highlights all year long. For the entire crew here at WGVU, I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Have a great week, everybody, and as always, anchor up.